Uh, Willie, first of all, we'll, we'll check on your squad news for uh, this first game of the season. How are you? How are you looking? Yeah, looking good. Um, you know, we've got majority of the players to be able to pick from, which is pleasing. Obviously, round one. Um, you know, we're, we're going to name a squad that that we think we can do the job um, this weekend. But unfortunate that some players will miss out, who have uh, who have been really, you know, they, they've uh, they've put their hand up all pre-season, but obviously we can only pick seventeen players. Who will miss out then? Who are the notable? Emissions. Uh so at this stage we, we haven't finalised the full squad, um, which we'll do tomorrow. But uh, there'll be a couple of players there that no doubt could be in the seventeen. Unfortunately, won't be. But we'll, we'll finalise tomorrow. From a fitness point of view, who won't you have? Uh from fitness point of view, so Yusuf um, still without with it with his hand, and um, pretty much we've got everyone else. Where everyone else is available, a couple of the young kids, but yeah, everyone's available. What are the biggest selection dilemmas for you, Willie, for this opening game? Uh, naturally, around the the prop forward position, that was an area that we had to strengthen last year. So, you know, I think we're we're fortunate that we've got some, uh, you know, five or six props that 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 could be in our seventeen. So there's going to be some players that'll miss out there, um, and our back row as well. There's no doubt that's an area that we, uh, you know, we've got some strong depth, um, and we'll have some players unfortunately that'll miss out. But uh, yeah, they're the two areas for us that. And we've got some, some good, good depth in. And the players that are going to miss out, have you told them that at the moment? Yeah, we'll have conversations with the players, no doubt, yeah. How hard is it for you as a coach to do that? I know it is your job, but how hard do you do you find those conversations? Yeah, it's never easy, um, you know, to tell someone who's worked hard all pre-season that they're not in the team. Um, you know, some of the players that will miss out, they, they haven't done a lot wrong. Um, we played, obviously, the troll against Featherston, which majority of the squad probably weren't, where they needed to be in that game. Um, so that makes it a bit, a bit easier. But then you play against Leeds and, um, you know, I don't think there was a, a bad player on the field. So, um, you know, to tell a player that they're not in, it's easy to say to a player you need to work on, you know, this and that. But there wasn't too many from the Leeds game. So it's it's not easy, but it's part of the job. What aspects of that performance against Leeds then do you want to see carried forward into this Wigan game? Yeah, mainly defensively. I thought our, our effort areas in defence um, and our ability to work hard for each other, that was really noticeable against Leeds. Um, but it has been all pre-season, so it's an area that we've worked hard on. So there's no doubt against a team like Wigan, you need to you need to keep moving, you need to keep connected as a line uh, because they're dangerous, they can hurt you at any time. So that's what we're going to carry forward. Do you have any fresh injuries at all? Uh, no, we don't. No, that's good. Um, so this is your debut then as a coach in Super League. What sort of emotions are stirring inside of you then, Willie, ahead of this one? Yeah, naturally uh, excited, extremely excited. I've been waiting a long time. Uh, when I got appointed, it was a you know long time ago now. So we've had some time to plan and prepare, which is which is what I wanted to do, um, being a first year coach. But um, yeah, there's a lot of excitement. Naturally, come close to to the game. Yeah, you, know, you get your nerves. I was I was nervous um, as an assistant coach, and I'm sure I'll be just if not more nervous as a head coach, but um, it's because I care so much um, and I, you know, I love what I do. So uh, the players are, are the ones that go out. They're the ones that go through battle. So I've got the easy job. <laughs> How would you best assess then your time at the club so far? Yeah, so far it's been enjoyable. Um, you know, naturally the the roller coaster starts now, which I've been part of for, for a long time. So I'm fully aware of, of what is about to happen, but it's it's been a... It's been an enjoyable pre-season. Uh, we've worked hard, went over to Tenerife, uh, connected as a group. So I'd like to think that we're, we're a tight group. Uh, but really enjoyed my time. It's uh, so far family settled in. Uh, but now the fun starts. And as I said, the roller coaster begins. What bad habits from last season have you had to unpick since you arrived? Oh, look, uh, every, every coach has got a, a different style of, of the way um, they want to play or want the team to play. So... For me, you know, naturally I kept what I thought was was effective and uh, the areas for me that I wanted to work on was was defensively. There's no doubt that we needed to to work on that area and tighten our defence up. Um, you know, we could move the footy and and play that ad-lib style of footy. So it was just getting a little bit of discipline within that, but I still want the players to play with freedom. Um, but certainly, you know, we just tightened up the effort areas and, and our defence. How confident, Willie, are you that you will have a better D this season? Well... You can only go by evidence, um, and we don't have a great deal of evidence at the moment in terms of Super League games. Um, naturally, last week we, you know, against a team like Leeds who who do ask a lot of questions, we defend extremely well. Um, we did that in the in the preseason. We've done that in the preseason. 
uh, for most of the preseason against each other when we're doing opposed. Uh, but I think it's a question or an answer that we'll know uh, we'll get answered in, in, in a few weeks' time. Uh, but, you know, by around 10, it's sort of you learn the habits of different teams and who they are. So by around 10, you'll know what type of team we are. What are you expecting from Super League this season and your main rivals then? And who, who do you think? I mean, we know that Saints and Wigan are going to be up there, we suspect. But um, what do you reckon to the, the strength of the league? Yeah, look, I think it's a pretty close competition. Nat- naturally, uh, St. Helens are favourites and, and rightly so. Um, you've got your teams that are up there every year in terms of where the bookies see them. But I think a lot of uh, a lot of teams are strengthened. Um, and I see it as a... As a, as a it's very. It's going to be competitive. Um, you know, we're all fighting to, to get in that top six, and I'm sure every team goes into the start of the season thinking that they're going to be in that top six and, and wanting to be in that top six. And if you're not, then you shouldn't be. You know, at this level. So um, I love the Super League. I love the way the Super League. Um, you know, the attacking freedom style of footy that we play over here. But as I said, from us, we need to look at tightening our defence because there's, there's obviously two sides um, with the ball. What should the expectation be for your team this season? Oh, look, I mean, everyone's going to have different expectations. I think uh, the Pookies have got us uh, second last or down the bottom somewhere, um, which is fine by me. Um, you know, then then naturally you can have your fan and 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 your supporter that loves the club that are going to expect a top six. So us internally, uh, you know, as I said before, we're, we're not playing, you know, to finish outside of that six. We're playing to get in that six. Naturally, you're playing to uh, to win competitions. That's That's exactly where we want to be. So I'm not going to make any massive statements to say, we're going to win the competition this year, but I will say that are we striving to? Absolutely. What did you make of the fifty to one odds on you to win the grand final? Then you said it's fine by you. What did you think when you heard that? I was thinking if I was allowed to bet, I might have a bet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, that, look, everyone's got different opinions on where they see different teams. Um, it's interesting where you know how they get that number. Um, naturally, the thing for us is they they haven't. You know, whoever sets figures like that and and predictions, they haven't seen what we've done over the last four or five months. So we know uh, what we've done, the work we've done. Now it's about executing that in, in performances. Naturally, you know, you go through, as I said before, the roller coaster of, you know, wins and losses, injuries, suspensions. There's a lot that happens in, in a season. Um, but we know if we, you know, transfer what we've done in our preseason, in, in the performance, which which we did only friendly, but we did against Leeds, you know, we see ourselves, uh, you know, playing those bigger games at the end of the year. Do you use those odds as motivation for your players? I be honest, mate. I, I didn't mention it at all to them. It's just the other bit of a joke here, but I don't I don't see read too much into it because, as I say, like uh, the people who set those odds haven't seen what we've done here. Naturally, you know, they get their reasons and. Um, you know, they'll look at squads, they'll look at depth, they look at that sort of thing. But what we've done is, you know, we we do our best to develop player one to player 30 in, in, in the squad. Um, naturally, you're going to get, hopefully you, you don't sort of go into that, but last year we had 30 odd players. So we, we've, we've, we've developed, a, you know, every member in the squad um, as if they're going to play. So teams are going to get injuries, you get suspensions. If we handle a bit of adversity when we, when, when we do get it, um, that's when you're going to see, you know, teams performing and, and and they'll be there in the back end of the year. You mentioned injuries and suspensions there. Lachlan Coote dodged a suspension, didn't he? How much were you sweating on him? Yeah, naturally, Lachlan is a very important part of what we do. Um, there's no doubt about that. So I think with any team, if you've got your spine, um, yeah, playing majority of the year and especially playing in those big games, then, then you do have more of a chance um, come the back end of the year. So... You know, Lachlan's a big part of what we do, but we've also got young Phoenix and, and Will Dagger, um, you know, ready to go as well. So they've been training extremely well. Um, but yeah, Lachlan's no secret that he's a big part for us to be, to be successful at the back end of the year. How determined is he to have a better season this season? What are you detecting from him? Yeah, well, he showed me that the way he came back. Um, so he naturally came back after a, a tough season um, with, with, with the injuries that he had. Probably, he probably needed a break. That was the biggest thing. So he went. We went over to Australia. Um, got some time off. He hadn't been back for a few years with his family. So he went. He went home, and then he came back, um, and he was a different person. He, he he's been all in from day one. Um, I've seen a player that's extremely determined to to get better, even at his age and and what he's done. 
Um, he shows that every day at training. He's, he hasn't missed a session. Um, he's important to what we do. And, you know, I can only go by what I've, what I've seen this year. And I've seen a very determined player that's hungry for success. Your first game then in charge of Rovers in a Super League match is against Wigan, then your old club. Does it feel fateful to you then that it is this team? Yeah, it's bizarre how it, how it happens, isn't it? I had a really enjoyable year and experience at Wigan. It's one of the best years of my life, actually. I, I said to my wife, I was, she wasn't over here at the time, but it would have been special for her to be here. But now we get to we get to experience it at, at KR. Um, but really enjoyed my time at Wigan. Naturally, they're the... Uh, they're the enemy this week, so looking forward to uh, to playing them and, you know, hopefully getting the result. You mentioned your wife there. Will she be at the game? Absolutely. Yeah, she she won't miss it. So my two boys as well, um, really looking forward to it. So she's obviously a big part of um, going to come over the other side of the world and, and support me. I'm grateful for that. So she she's invested and fully invested in what we do. How have they all settled into life in East Yorkshire? Yeah, really well. Um, my kids, my children naturally set school was the – the most important um, part or, you know, for, for them to settle in and they settle in after the first day. Um, there's great people in Hull and, and where we live. So, you know, we're lucky, but well, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful because it's a, I know if, if you don't have a family that settles in early, it, it can be harder for Australian based players or players that come over from other countries. So, you know, I'm lucky. I'm, I'm a human as well, being a coach, but so it can affect me as well, but I, I can honestly say that my family settled in. Good. How old are your kids, by the way? Uh, ten and five, two boys. Okay. Do they have any choice in being big fans of rugby league and, and what dad does? Yeah, they do. They do and love KR now. <laughs> so obviously supported me wherever I've been, but this one's a little bit more special being a head coach. Um, as I say, very, very grateful, very lucky to have a family that's that's so supportive. Good. What sort of shape then, Willie, do you feel you're heading into this opening game in? Shape, did you say? Yeah. Yeah, good. Good. It's it's for us now. It's just about going out and doing it. We've we've trained enough. We've we've had our friendlies and uh, we're in good shape. So we'll always look at what we do. Yes, naturally we've looked at and prepared for Wigan, um, but we're ready to play and ready to see where we're at. You know, the friendly against Leeds was a good stepping stone for this game, but this is the real stuff now. So we're in good shape and and we're looking forward to it. And let's talk more about Wigan. They obviously. Came up short in the semi-finals last season. Won the Grand, uh, sorry, won the Challenge Cup as well. And um, how tough a, an opening fixture will this be? Do you feel? Yeah, naturally, very tough in terms of um, you know where the experts and where Wigan's been placed the last sort of year. Um, it, we, we know we know we know what to expect from Wigan. We know what they're going to bring, and that's why you don't want to focus too much on on a team like Wigan or St Helens, and you can get overall pretty easy because you know they're they're thereabouts every year. Um, so we know where they what they're going to bring. We've had a look at their individuals. We've had a look at, you know, um, their attacking style. And, and you know, obviously we've got plans around how we're going to defend that. But at the end of the day, it's like you say, what what kind of shape are we in? We're, we're in good shape. We're ready to go um, and looking forward to playing them. What importance, Willie, do you place on getting off to a winning start? Yeah, look, it's, you've got, you know. Because you'll be aware, more. won't you? will be aware, won't you, that the club has struggled to get off to a winning start in, in recent years? Yeah, are we going out to win the game? Absolutely. Is it important? Yes, it is. But naturally, you're gonna you're gonna hit some bumps along the way. Um, we'd love to have a strong start. We've trained to have a strong start, so that's that's what we're preparing to do. Um, our whole preseason's been around um, hitting the ground running. So I'm not going to sit here and say that we're going to feel our way into the season. Um, we're going to hit the ground running. So you know, hopefully that then uh, you know we we get we get a win off the back of that. But that's what we're striving to do. And specifically, where do you see the threats in the Wigan lineup? Well, they've got, they've got a lot of individual threats. You know, obviously there's there's French, um, there's Field, there's Marshall. They've got some, you know, good forwards and Singleton and Cooper and um, Kai Pierce. So there's a number of threats that I've just named then. Um, but again, if you start to single those out and you and, and you go oh six, seven, eight threats, you you can go wow, we get we're getting overawed here. So we we respect and we're aware of the threats, um, but they've got to stop us as well. You know, we've got a plan. Of, of how we want to play. Um, and that's what we're looking towards more so. So, yeah, they'll have offloads. They'll have some ad-lib, ad-lib footy that we need to um, control. Um, but as I say, we've got a plan around that. Tom Opacic looks a very exciting prospect for the new season. What impact do you feel he can have in his first season in Super League? Yeah, Tom, we're getting, you know, I believe at the top of his game, he had, he had a couple of offers to stay in Australia. 
Um, you know, with Tom, I think, you know, he openly said it, the Featherstone game, you know, gave him a, um, I suppose, waking him up in a sense to go, oh, I need to get out of second second gear here, which which he, he did, you know. Like, I think Tom, um, knowing Tom and who he is now, um, he's, a, he's a very determined young man. Um, what I love about him is he, physical um, and his toughness. He's, he's not your centre. That's, that's razzle-dazzle and, you know, he's going to score the 90-meter tries. He may and hopefully he does. But it's all the work that um, that goes unnoticed, especially not by his teammates or his coaching staff. That's what we value in Tom. Um, he does all the tough stuff, all the little things that most people don't see. Another one's James Batchelor, who does that. Um, so they're people that or players that that I love in our team. And then naturally, then you have your, your Mikey Lewis's and your Jez Litton's and, and Matt Parcells, who can do all that flamboyant things off the back of um, what these other guys were said. And just a final one from me. What would it mean to you personally to get off to a winning start? Yeah, it, for me personally, obviously, um, you know, it would be really pleasing. But for the players, more importantly, it just it would just give them a strong belief of, of what I've seen over the past four or five months and what the coaching staff's seen. Um, we believe in this group. And I think it's time now that as a club, we start to believe in ourselves a little bit more. That's probably what's held us back, you know, from not winning those titles. Um, there's something there. There's a blockage there. But... It's up to um to us now to to uh yeah, I think the players once they you know the leads game help, if they go out and beat Wigan, then that belief starts to get a bit stronger. So as I said before, evidence is the best way to um to draw from belief and, and confidence and beating Wigan will give us a, a good start. Wish you well, Willie. Lovely to chat Cheers. with you. Thanks Thank for you. your time. You too. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Hi, hey, Willie, you all right. Hey Joe, how you doing, mate? Yeah, good, thank you. I won't keep you long. Obviously, Matt's covered most of it. I was just speaking about starting well. How important is it starting at Craven Park? I know you tasted the atmosphere in pre-season last week, but it's going to be a full house, a really entertaining day on Channel 4. You must be really relishing the opportunity. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Um, I suppose you always have a look who you're playing round one, but for me, the most important thing was was playing here. Uh, I, I wanted to play at Craven Park. Um, in front of the f- home fans, uh, they're obviously passionate group, very vocal. Um, we got a taste of that against Leeds in the friendly, but there's no doubt this will be on steroids. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and I suppose now you're ready to finish the talking and, like you said, get out there and put your methods into practice. Yeah, absolutely. As I said, they're, they're ready to play. Um, the players have worked hard all preseason and they put themselves in a position now to to go out and start well. Um, you know, as I said before to Matt, I think it's you know, we're not going to tiptoe around saying we're going to ease our way into the, into the season. We, we're prepared to, to hit the ground running and start well. And hopefully that transfers into, into a win. Um, but there's no doubt we'll, it'll transfer into a positive and good performance. Perfect. Well, let's hope it's the start of a successful journey. Best of luck and I'll speak to you on Saturday. Cheers, Joe. Thanks, mate. Bye, mate. Hey, well, just a quick couple from me, please. Hey, mate. Hey, James. Um, yeah, just you mentioned um, James Batchelor there. Um, I've got the right brother. <laughs> They'll be reading about his brother being injured today. Um, yeah, you mentioned him. Um, what do you see as his best position in the back row? Yeah, look, we train, we've trained him uh, as a second row and as a loose forward in, in the preseason. Um, at the moment, he's he's he's, 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 he's playing in the second row. So right. uh, he can play both. It's it's hard to say. I, I need to see more of him in games. But at the moment, he's gonna he's gonna be playing second row for us. Um, the thing about Batch is he just he just works so hard. Doesn't matter where you you play him, um, and you need those people in your team. You know, Cameron Murray's obviously a, a star player over in the NRL. Um, he can be you know your best thirteen in the in the team, and he can be best back rower. Uh, we've got some really good back rowers um, in the club, um, but I see Batch in both. Yeah, would you like a, a settled right right edge this season? And that means Bachelor maybe opportunity um, and Ethan Ryan perhaps. Yeah, naturally you do you do want to have cohesion um no matter where it is so especially like with, with edge defense they need to understand each other and understand what what each uh, you know each player is doing um but in saying that there's, there's always going to be at the moment especially um there's some healthy competition so you know form's going to be important um because you can have players that won't be playing in this game that that are ready to go as well but naturally with you know the, the best teams and the most successful teams are the ones that have got cohesion um as I said before, in the spine, but you need it as an edge unit as well. And at 13, do you like a ball player there? Yeah, yeah. The way we play our 13 is we have a ball player. So, uh, you know, you can go different styles. You can have your three sort of 
prop type players and just be yeah. um, carry, you know, have have a, a strong carry. And then where we like to we like to move the footy, you know, we we understand that. Um, or I understood that what we did well last year was was we did that well. Um, but then we need to have elements of discipline within that. So they'll play with freedom. You know, we we give them. Obviously, we've got a framework in place of how we want to play, but the players play what they see. Um, that's having the 13, the ability to be able to hit one defender on the field and then hit the other defender. That's that's the beauty of having a ball playing 13. Does Elliot Minchella give you what, what you want at 13, though? Yeah, well, there's Elliot, there's there's Dean Hadley, um, and, yep. and there's Batch. There's three players there that can do that, but Elliot did that certainly in the in the Leeds game, and he's done it during the preseason. Lovely. Thank you very much. We'll keep you any longer. Cheers Thanks, for all the best Saturday. Enjoy it. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Hi, right, Willie. Just just one from me, if that's okay. Yeah, no worries, Cameron. I just wondered, obviously, pre-season's over now. Super League's pre-season's a lot shorter than the NRL. So I just wondered if you feel like there's enough time for new coaches to really settle in and get your philosophies embedded. Yeah, look, for, for me it has, because we, we started a little bit earlier. And I did that, I did that deliberately because sometimes you can go into pre-season, oh, it's a uh, long time till you play, you know, you, we've, got, we've got a few months, but it comes around so quick. So even though we we were the first to come back, you still look at round one this week and where, where did the time go? But I suppose the one thing we can look back as staff and go, did we cover what we needed to? Did we tick off everything? Uh, more importantly, did the players get what they needed? And, you know, I feel that we did that. So if, uh, you know, you come back too late, then you're chasing your tail. And for me, it's hard to do that in in season. Um, I'm a massive believer in your preseason sets up who you are during the season. So if you if you know more often than not, if, if personally and collectively, if you do have a strong preseason, um, that most of the time will transfer into your season. Um, but at times, look, there's there's obviously teams that win competitions, they come back later, but they've probably, you know, they've if they've kept the main players, it doesn't take as long to to connect as a team and, and get your combinations in place. So for us, new coach, we had some new players. We started earlier um, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Cheers and good luck for the weekend. Thank you, mate.